Before Wiz Khalifa would roll up to his house in the hills like it's nothing, he was just a kid living young, wild, and free in the city of black and yellow with hopes and dreams of waking up so high on the top floor of a glass house and having the spotlight on him. Before Wiz would have one of the most viewed videos ever uploaded onto YouTube with See You Again, which currently has 4.1 billion views on the site. Before Wiz would have his own strain of weed. Somebody drove it like seven hours to come to me one day, I needed some pot, and it was like, I got the KK, like, and they was just saying, I got the KK, I got the KK. I was like, what is the KK? It's like, it's your Kush, Khalifa's Kush. I'm like, damn, that's tight. Before he would star in an Oreo commercial with his son. Hello? Side. Before he would go from being a skinny kid who no one would have been scared to fight, to gaining 40 pounds as a trained Muay Thai fighter. And before Wiz would have over 27.2 million followers on Instagram, 34.2 million followers on Twitter, and close to 19 million subscribers on YouTube. With the humble persona Wiz displays in interviews, you might forget that he's one of the most successful artists of all time. But his humbleness could come from always remembering the work that he put in for years. He grew up with military parents who traveled all over the world. He impressed the studio head so much with his lyrics that they let him record for free. And he worked for years on his craft, building an online fan base. Now, whatever Wiz wants to do, he can do. But how did he get to be the massive superstar he is today? We'll walk you through the journey in this video. This is the story of Wiz Khalifa. What's going on good people in the comments section? My name is Jeremy Hecht. I hope you're having one heck of a day and I'll be your host today as I take you through the come up of Wiz Khalifa here for you on Before They Were Famous. Now, if you're new here, I'm the LA host for this channel bringing you weekly content. Recently, I've done videos on DaBaby and YG, so be sure to check those out later. Follow me on Instagram and let me know who to cover next in the comment section down below. I'll reply to as many people as I can in a future video and I'll also be replying to some of your comments that you left on my last video at the end of this one so be sure to stick around for that but before we jump into it I've got a trivia question for you that I'll be answering at the end of the video as well what is Wiz's stoner nickname from a few years back and I have a feeling a lot of you don't know this even if you think you do all right let's get into it before they were famous before they were, before. Famous. They were famous about <gasps> that was a pretty good video I like this guy does look ready cool. you did a great Michael job. is never wrong so damn that was cool how did he know that Whoa! Wiz Khalifa was born Cameron Jabril Thomas on September 8, 1987 in Minot, North Dakota to military parents who were constantly moving around. His parents split up when he was around the age of three, but Wiz lived in multiple places globally, spending time in Germany, the UK, and Japan before finally settling down in Pittsburgh with his mother. Music was in his household from a young age, with his parents always having something playing. He was forced to leave his friends so often when moving to a new place that music became the only consistent part of his life. When he was younger, he would write poems and stories to help get his thoughts out. And Wiz would also go back and research 90s rap like Biggie, Snoop, Cameron, NWA, Bone Thugs, Big Daddy Kane, and Wu-Tang, which helped him fall in love with the craft of writing lyrics. Wiz attended Taylor Alderdice High School in Pittsburgh, and in school he was a good student who always paid attention and listened and did his homework. He was a little bit loud and was the class clown occasionally, but for the most part, he was just a good kid. It was in Pennsylvania that Wiz began to write lyrics in his notebooks, and there began his rap career. His stage name Khalifa comes from the Arabic word meaning successor and wisdom, which is where Wiz came from. He's mentioned several origins of the name though, including his grandfather giving him the name Khalifa because of his Muslim heritage, stating that he felt like Wiz would bring wisdom within his music. The older kids he would hang out with started calling him a young Wiz because he was a prodigy, being good at literally everything he tried and that's still true today i mean look at his progress in mma fighting in such a short time even joe rogan was impressed the videos it's nice to see because you're training hard like Thanks. i'm watching you do muay thai yeah, and yeah. hit the pads i'm yeah, like dude yeah. you're, you're really putting in work on this yes yeah, sir wiz's first mixtape was self-produced and self-recorded at 14 years old and it was called words of wisdom they were a trash i'll never be a producer bro by 15 years old wiz was recording at a studio called id labs in pittsburgh the studio manager heard a young Wiz rapping and was so impressed by his lyricism that he let him come back and record for free whenever he wanted. Well, not technically free because Wiz would have to clean the studio's bathrooms, go get blunts for the studio crew, and pick up Wendy's for other rappers. So he was basically an intern. 
In my intern days at the radio station, I got a lot of breakfast burritos for my favorite rapper, so I feel him on that. The only other job that Wiz has had in his life was doing a paper route at 12 years old. Shortly after he began recording at ID Labs, the president of Rostrum Records, Benji Grinberg, heard Wiz rap on a Pittsburgh compilation tape and thought that Wiz's verses were the standouts. At the time, Wiz was just 16 years old, but Benji knew that the potential was limitless. That potential was worked on daily from that point on. Wiz signed with Rostrum Records and started his journey in artist development. A journey that would be seven years of constantly working on his lyrics, song structure, flow, hooks, tone, and everything else that would produce elite music. It was also at 16 that Wiz started his tattoo journey, with his mom actually offering to buy his first tattoo for his 16th birthday, so shout out to mom for helping to create his image. In terms of weed, Wiz doesn't like to say exactly how old he was when he started, but here's what he had to say about his first ever time smoke. We got a hotel for his birthday, and we was like, yo, we gonna hotbox the bathroom. Wow. And I had never smoked before, but I was acting like I smoked and uh, it was horrible. At first, he hated it and was tripping up pretty badly, but after some time, as you know, he began to love weed and it's become a huge part of his life. One of my life goals is to smoke with Wiz and I don't even really smoke that much. I just feel like that would be a once in a lifetime experience. So if you're watching this Wiz, pass the blunt, I'm here. Wiz began to do shows in small areas outside of Pennsylvania, building up his stage presence. His first mainstream tape was called Prince of the City in 05. He dropped Show and Prove the following year, earning him a spot on Rolling Stone's Artist to Watch list. In 2007, he signed to Warner Brothers Records through Rostrum and released the mixtapes Grow Season and Prince of the City 2, continuing to gain an online following. Later that year, he dropped his Warner Bros. debut single called Say Yeah, and it landed at number 25 on the Billboard Rhythmic Top 40 chart. He continued to flood the online scene with music, dropping the Star Power and Flight School mixtapes, but he was ready to drop his official label debut album. Unfortunately, Warner Brothers didn't feel like he was ready and delayed the album numerous times. The two parted ways and through Rostrum, Wiz kept releasing music. In 2009, he dropped How Fly With Currency and started to play around with melody a bit more. When the two first met, they realized how similar they were and formed a really strong bond. Wiz even slept on the couch of Currency's apartment for the whole summer just to record. After that first day that we both seen that we smoke exactly the same amount and can hang and want more weed after that, it was like, oh yeah, like we cool, it's all set. And I literally didn't even leave for the whole summer. I just stayed down there after that day. It was the Burn After Rolling mixtape that gained a lot of online traction as he rapped over multiple popular instrumentals, including my personal favorite, the Walking on a Dream inspired song, The Thrill. Then he released Deal or No Deal the same year. Wiz appeared on what some could argue is the best double XL freshman class list to date, alongside his peers J. Cole, Big Sean, Freddie Gibbs, and Nipsey Hussle R.I.P. Wiz was a part of the internet era of mixtapes that ushered in a new class of rappers that would shift the sound for generations to come. Big Sean, J. Cole, Kid Cudi, XV, Drake, Big Crit, Mac Miller, Wiz, and more changed the way that new fans discovered their favorite rappers. It was a direct connection from artists to fans, but he was also a part of a group of artists who started to treat mixtapes like albums. I've been grinding, I've been getting my money, uh, doing a lot of shows and stuff like that, and really connecting with my fans figuring out my fan base, who I'm making my music for, who enjoys it the most, and, and, and what they're getting from my music. And, you know, ever since the, ever since I really tapped into that and then found my internet presence, I ran with it. Yeah. And using this formula, Wiz changed everything when he dropped the free mixtape Kush and Orange Juice in 2010. The title of the mixtape was actually coined from one of his friends who said that Wiz's laptop smelled like Kush and Orange Juice. That b said it smelled like Kush and Orange Juice, man. <laughs> My boy Jake from uh, from Canada. Oh, okay. Shout out to Jake from Canada for creating a legendary moment, and shout out to Damian Campbell, my guy, for getting that info. The mixtape was the number one trending topic on Twitter and became number one on Google's hot search trends. From there, he began selling out venues on tour, winning Best New Artist awards, and gaining the respect of his peers and the industry alike. While the timeline is hazy, somewhere around that time, he did sign a new deal with Atlantic Records, and his debut single with Atlantic was a massive smash, to put it lightly. Black and Yellow became the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100, and basically every single school in the nation created their own parody of the song with their school's colors. There's like a Dominican remix, there's like a Japanese remix, it's, mm -hmm. it's crazy, you know? It makes the record bigger every time it gives it like new life when people remix it and, you know, do their own versions and have their, their crowd onto it, you know? There was even a Harry Potter parody. 
No joke. With that song, he was the first artist from Pittsburgh to crack the Billboard Top 40 since Christina Aguilera. And I know she technically wasn't born there, but she was raised there, so they counted her as a pit artist for that stat. Finally, he was ready to drop his debut album, Rolling Papers. But in an unprecedented move within the industry, Wiz decided to drop Cabin Fever, the mixtape, two weeks before the album was set to come out. Not only did that move work, but that mixtape has become one of his fan base's most prized possessions. In 2011, Wiz dropped his debut, selling close to 200k copies first week, and having the singles On My Level, Roll Up, and No Sleep. Since then, Wiz has had an insane career arc and has created an empire for himself. Singles? Check. Albums? Check. Two check, movies check, collabs check, having his own strain of weed check, and most recently he's even found an interest in MMA fighting. Is there anything that Wiz Khalifa can't do? Well I guess we'll have to wait and see because this is before they were famous. Oh, and by the way, his weed nickname is, not, not the nickname for his weed. Anyways, just roll it. No pun intended. Well, pun intended, but. Wiz Khalifa, AKA Cushton Slater. Round of applause in the studio. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. And there you have it. The answer to your question from the beginning of the video. All right, now let's get to some of your comments from one of my latest videos. These are all from the rich life of the baby. Let's go. Legend Mod says 1K likes and I will play the baby in Walmart intercom. Uh, I like that one because that would be legendary for those of you who don't know the baby uh, murdered a man in a Walmart legally in self-defense, but having the baby as like the Walmart figurehead or having him in Walmart commercials could potentially be a great marketing move or it could go left. So either way, great comment. Jay the Great says, Jeremy reminds me of the first episode from the Boondocks when Riley said, white people say every word like this. They say the whole word like this. Okay, first of all, I see your point. I'm a big Boondocks fan, so I know the I know the reference you're talking about. Second of all, though, uh, for those of you who don't know, I write out all my scripts, and so I'm reading them off a teleprompter. So like, I don't normally talk that much like that. Like, I don't enunciate every single word like that normally. But when I'm reading it, uh, who am I kidding? I'm as white as they come. Young Plug says the baby colon bitch. I'm high as a kite. Host colon legendary. Okay, so. For those of you who haven't watched the video, in that part of the video, I said it was legendary that the baby's hand was still hurt and he had to get surgery on it because he was fighting a dude in the Louis Vuitton store. I wasn't saying it was legendary that he was high as a kite from the medication from the surgery, just the fact that he beat some dude up in the Louis Vuitton store and that he had to get surgery for the fight. That's all. JS said the weed he threw at Rolling Loud was fake. I did see that after making the video. A couple of you guys said that in the comments. I know he obviously wasn't throwing out massive bags of weed now, but looking at the initial video, that's what it looked like, so that's why I said that. Mr. Falls Towny 99A said that was one heck of a video. You killed it once again, homie. Shout out Jeremy Heck and the baby. I just want to shout out you. Thank you. I appreciate the support and I appreciate you for leaving that comment. I hope you're having one heck of a day now. And finally, Kawhi Leonard said, I like this guy. He cool. Wait, what? Now, I know that wasn't actually Kawhi Leonard commenting that, but great username, great profile picture. And Kawhi, if you happen to be watching this somehow, just know you did everything you needed to do for the city of Toronto. I don't care if you stay. You can go back to LA if you want. But if you choose to stay, I think the city, uh, City will be very appreciative, and I think we can win one more next year. So we'll see. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, be sure to subscribe. We're almost at 3 million subscribers, so close. So hit that notification bell. Don't miss me in any of the next videos. Dream good, live better. I hope you have one heck of a day, and I will see you in the next one. Uh, yeah. All right. See ya.